All right, let's briefly talk about Newton's third law, probably the most misunderstood law of all of Newton's laws. Newton's third law is simply that now it's, some people say uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, but that's really not as clear as uh, what, we can, what we can express. Uh, Newton's third law can be expressed this way. The force of object A on object B is equal to the opposite of the force that object B exerts on object A. And this opposite means opposite what? Well, it means opposite direction. That's what that opposite means. This simply means that if object A exerts a force on B, then object B must exert the exact same magnitude force back on A, but in the opposite direction. Now, let's just say that a force acts, any force. How many objects must be involved in that particular force? So I'll give you a couple choices. Let's say one object. You have to have at least one object for a force. You have to have at least two objects for a force. Uh, you have to have, you could have three or more objects for a force. So make your choice there. Uh, is it one, two, or three or more? Okay, if there is any force, any force in the universe that we know of, there must be exactly, exactly two objects involved. Involved, but you may say, well, what if there's like a planetary system of like uh, a sun and two planets? That's three objects, isn't it? Well, you'll have the force of the sun on the planet one, two objects. The force of the sun on planet two, two objects. The force of planet one on planet two, two objects. Any force involves exactly two objects. The easy key to Newton's third law is to determine the identity of the two objects. Once you figure out what those two objects are, then it's easy to figure this out. Now, why don't N3 action-reaction force pairs cancel each other? So in other words, a horse pulls a cart, a cart pulls a horse. How can anything ever accelerate? It's because the two forces are on the, uh, the, the forces are on different objects. One is on the cart, one is on the horse. They're on different objects. They can't cancel if, if a force is on, one force is on the, the cart, the other force is on the horse. Yes, they're equal in magnitude and opposite direction, but they're on different objects. Will you ever see N3 force pairs in a free body diagram? No, because there's only one object in the free BD, in the free body diagram, FBD. So, will N3 force pairs ever combine in the net force? The answer again is no, because they will always be on different objects. So, you will never have both of those shown in a free body diagram, because they're only exerted on different objects. Okay, so, uh, the demos, if I accelerate, in other words, if I push myself on the floor that way, what are the two objects? Well, there's me, and then there's the floor. So the Newton's third law equation would be something like this. The force of the teacher on the floor will be equal, but in the opposite direction is the force of the floor on the teacher. So here's the teacher right here, and here's the floor right here. There's one force on the teacher pushing this way. There's another force that's on the floor that's pushing this way. They don't cancel each other. They're the same magnitude, but they're on different objects. Now, uh, what else must accelerate besides the teacher in this demo? You're right that if you said the floor the floor must accelerate, but the magnitude is so small because the mass of the, the, the Earth is so much greater uh, that it's undetectable. Okay, now, next demo or next uh, lecture point here is this. Um, so, here we got two different situations. We have two people on skateboards and they're pushing off each other, A and B. In this situation, uh, only B is pushing off. A is just standing there. But I will tell you, in both situations, B pushes with the same amount of force for the same amount of time. 
When we do this demo, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do it in class, you will see that the acceleration is exactly the same in both. If B is pushing on A, in other words, there's a force uh, this way on A, this is the force of B on A, there'll be the exact same magnitude force that way, force of A on B. A doesn't have to do anything, you can just sit there and they'll still be the same exact force. And these will be the same magnitude, but they'll be in opposite directions. Now, that may seem contradictory to you, but force is not something that's conserved. Uh, if your muscles are contracting here, really you can save your, save your breath and save your effort because if B is pushing off of you, it will exert the same, as long as B exerts the same force, this will have the same effect as this one. I'll just draw that same thing. This is the force of B on A, force of A on B. It'll be the same thing. Uh, in this case, the two objects are uh, person A and person B. So you will have this equation, B on A and A on B, and the equation will be the force of A on B will be equal to the negative force of B on A. Now, people have asked me, does it matter which order they're in? It does not, because you could just put the negative on that side. Now, how about if a person throws a medicine ball while on a skateboard? What is that going to look like? So here's a person uh, on a skateboard like this. Here's our skateboard. And here's our person. And they throw a medicine ball. They exert a force on the medicine ball that away. They accelerate it. So what happens is, again, the two objects are what? It's going to be the person who's on the skateboard and the ball. So when you draw the two objects, uh, it'll, there'll be a force on the ball this way. That's one free body diagram right there. And then you have the person on the skateboard. The force on them will be that way. Same magnitude, but opposite direction. So our, th free, our uh, Newton's third law equation, F of person on the ball vector is equal to the opposite of the force of the ball on the person. Now, will they both accelerate at the same rate? Let's just say that the person is three times the mass of the medicine ball. Will they accelerate at the same rate? No, the person will have less acceleration because they have more mass. Classic problem, two cars hit each other. Big old truck, little VW right there. Which experience is the higher force? I'd like you to vote one for truck, two for car, or three. They both experience the same force. They both experience the same force, Newton's third law. They may say, well, aren't the passengers more injured in the car? They very well may be. But that's a force on the passengers. That's not a force on the car. The only way that you would experience a force, uh, the same force the car experienced, if you were tied to the bumper. And let's not do that, folks. Uh, so it actually, the, the force of the car on the truck is equal to the force of the truck on the car. They are both the same magnitude, but in opposite directions like that. Okay. Which experience is the higher acceleration? Truck? car, or neither. The car experiences higher acceleration. Why? It has less mass. Now, now we can address the issue with the, the passengers. Which vehicle's passengers experience a higher acceleration? And we can assume that they have the same mass in truck and in the car, the passengers have the same mass, and that they stay with the vehicle. Which passengers experience higher acceleration? Well, assuming they stay with the vehicle, the car has higher acceleration. The car does. So that means the passengers in the car will experience higher acceleration. Why? They stay with the car. And that's what you want to do in, a, in an accident is be seat belted in so you stay with your vehicle. That's the safest thing to do. So which passengers experience the higher force? Well, if the car's passengers are accelerating more, the car's passengers will experience a higher force, but what's exerting the force? It is their seat belt. Their seat belt accelerates them more 
than the truck's passengers. So it's not the truck that exerts a force on the passenger in the car. It's the passenger's seatbelt that exerts a force on them. If their acceleration is greater than the truck's passenger's acceleration, the force on them is greater. So let's go to this. A bug hits a car windshield. Which experiences more force? The bug, the car, or neither? Think about that. Bug hits the windshield, which is more force? Neither! The force of the bug on the car is equal to the force of the car on the bug in opposite directions. Which one experiences more acceleration though? Clearly the bug does because it has lower mass.